We're talking about sponges today. Now, in our life, where do we see sponges? When mom and dad are washing the dishes, do we see sponges? Yes. Okay, now are those the same sponges that you find at the bottom of the ocean? No. What's the term for those kind of sponges? Yeah. Um, those are non-living and the sponges in the ocean are. Are living. So if it's a non-living thing, what's the word we use to describe it? It starts with an S. If it's fake. Um, Starts with an S, ends with an etic. Syn. No. Something that's fake is synthetic. Okay? So the sponges that mom and dad used to wash the dishes, those are synthetic sponges. Most of the sponges you see are, are synthetic. What about that sponge you used to wash your body? Synthetic. That's a synthetic sponge. Is that a sponge we took from the ocean that we just put in your house? No. No, no, no. It would smell very bad. Okay? So let's look and start reading from the top. It says sponge. Okay, who's going to start reading from it? All right, you're going to pick it up. Go ahead. Um, sponge. Okay, write that down. Make a note. R. Classified. As. Animals. Okay, that's important. All right, so write that down. That's your first note. Okay. So that whole paragraph, the most important thing that we learned so far is that sponges are classified as animals. All right. It could have any different shape. Now, a sponge has no definite shape. What else in science takes no definite shape or form? Water. Water, very good. All right. So water, like a sponge, good, takes no definite shape. For example, if you pour water into a cup, will it become the cup? Yeah. If you pour water into a bowl, will it become the bowl? Yes. Right, so it's very flexible. Now, what do they say the sponge has a lot of? Water. Water, yeah. But what's on the sponge? What do you got? Okay. Pores. Pores. Okay, so there's little tiny pores all over the sponge. Now, does a sponge have a head or a mouth or a neck? No. No head, mouth, or neck. So how does it eat? What do you got? It absorbs water and pour it over themselves. Right, so where is it? It's under the water. So what happens? Stuff is flowing around in the water and they come in through the pores, right? So when it absorbs water, it also what? Eats. Feeds itself, okay? Good, pick it up. It also breeds. It also breeds as well. I'm going to pick up the next paragraph. It says, most sponges live in the ocean, but there are a few freshwater species or kinds. What does it mean, freshwater? What's the difference between ocean and freshwater? We got freshwater is like in lakes or rivers where it has no salt in it. But in the ocean, there's salt in it, the water, so it's considered salt water. Okay, which water is safer to drink, salt water or freshwater? Fresh water. Fresh water. Should you just drink the water right out of the river? No. no. What do you need to do with it? Boil it. Boil it. Definitely want to boil it, okay? Because if you don't boil it, what's living inside the water? Dirt. Not dirt. What's a science term? Pathogens. Pathogens or bacteria, okay? There are all, also animal species. Yeah, there's a lot of animal. Animals do go to the bathroom in the water, too. Okay? Uh. That's why you definitely want to boil the water. Okay, keep going. It says most sponges live in the ocean. But there are a few freshwater species. Sponges can be found both in shallow and in deep water. They inhabit all the seas, but more kinds and numbers of sponges live in warm, temperate, and tropical waters than anywhere else. The largest sponges, including the commercial sponges people use for cleaning, grow in warmer waters. Okay? Has anybody ever seen a mop and at the end of the mop there's a sponge? Okay, so that's commercial use of sponges. We've also seen sponges that we use to wash dishes. What about sponges that we use to wash our bodies? What's another fancy name for a sponge to wash your body? Like your mom will say, go to the supermarket or go to CVS and get me this sponge. Starts with an L. Anybody can guess? It's really hard. What do you got, you know? Um, yeah, loofah, that's it, a loofah, okay? A loofah is a fancy way to This guy uses a loofah, okay? It's all right. I never it, used one. He never used one, okay. It's, it's, one, one, of, it's one of those fluffy things. It's one of those fluffy things. Does anybody use one of those fluffy things to wash their body? No. No? no? Nobody does? Oh, my sister doesn't. Does okay, it. now what's the, what's, what's the positive thing of using that to scrub your skin? What does it do for you? It takes away some of the bacteria. What does it take off your body? It takes off your dermis. The dermis. What's another word for dermis? Dead a small skin. dead skin. Yeah. yeah. So it wipes away the dead dermis. Who says the dermis? All right. So yeah, any extra dermis you have or dead skin cells, the sponge cleans it off. And is that good for your body? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to have dead skin cells all over your body, right? 
Oh, so on your foot? Yeah. Actually, the dermis, it's good for you. It's a flux of bacteria. Good. Now, let me ask you a question. Are we... Our, is our dermis and the sponge very similar? Don't we have a lot of pores on our skin? Sort of, yeah. Sort of, yeah, right? So if you sit in a pool of water, will your skin absorb the water? No. no. So your skin doesn't change if you leave it in the water a long time? Yes, yes, yes. it gets wrinkly. It gets wrinkly, right? If I take a sponge that's dry and I put it inside of a bucket, what's going to happen? So, it's gonna suck it all up. If I put you in a bucket that's that's full, are you gonna suck up all the water? No. no. See, that's the difference, okay? So it's gonna displace the water. It's probably gonna overflow. And you're probably gonna get stuck in there. Right. Exactly. See, see how he has that cup on it. On it. See how he has this cup. If I fill this cup up to the top, right, right up to the top, and I decide to drop a ball in there, what's gonna happen to the water? It's gonna Spill out. But if I drop a sponge in there, what's going to happen? Yeah, and I'm right now. Okay, now if you really well, so there you go. Right, that's, that's the idea. So, keeping it going, let's go to where it says the body of the sponge. Who wants to read from that part? Okay, go ahead. This time she put plants in it. Yeah, yeah, so it's shaped like a vase, something, something that you put plants in. What's a goblet? Old fancy medieval age cups. Yes, an old fancy medieval age cup. Who Thank drank? You. Who drank from a go goblet? A king. Or a king or a royal person. Or a queen. If you got a king, you need a queen. There you queen. go. All right. So a king or a queen drank from a goblet. All right. That's what they used to do. Now, what does it say specifically about sponges? Do they have any definite shape? No. 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 Can a sponge be as big as this wall? Yes. Yeah. Pretty much, right? Or can a sponge be as tiny as like? This little thing right here. What? Yeah. That? I don't even know what that is. Now, so, it could be very small too. Now, here's the thing about sponges. Are sponges resilient? What I mean is, let's say I get really angry one day and I'm in the ocean. I'm just angry, you know? I'm swimming around. And I decide to cut this sponge in half. Okay? Will the sponge die? No. No, because it has these regeneration powers. What it means is if I cut this sponge in half, it's going to float in the ocean. And then it's going to land right here. And what is it going to start to do? Grow. Grow. Grow out the rest of its body cream new sponge. There you go. Now, if I take him, right, and I cut him in half, and I put <laughs> him half over there and half over there, what's going to happen? Is he going to continue to grow? He's going to die. Uh, let's hope not, because if he starts growing, we've got a problem going. <laughs> so that's the idea. So now we know that, okay? Keep going. Keep going. 